Hey guys, welcome to Coding Spot and welcome to the fifth and last part of this tutorial. So I know in the last video we managed to pretty much finish our game, but I decided to do this fifth part because I want to show you something that's happening with our screen. And also, as I told you, I want to refactor and organize a little bit our code. Okay, so I want to start by showing you what's happening with our screen. So what do you think would happen if we change either the width or the height of our screen? So I'm going to go ahead and set both values to 800 for you to see. I'm going to go ahead and save and run. So as you can see, our game breaks. And even though we can keep playing, the dimensions of our board and game in general are completely damaged. And that's because our game only works with dimensions of 600 by 600 pixels. So I'm going to go ahead and open a script I did for you to see how our game should look like by the end of this video. So as you can see, I have a constant called width and a constant called height that is actually equal to width. So I'm going to go ahead and change the width to 800, hence the height, for you to see what happens with the board. So as you can see, dimensions are pretty good. And whenever I click a square, figures are the size of that square, right? Lines are pretty good. So it works. And this code not only works with 800, but I can actually change this to 300. So a smaller board, and it should work as well. So as you can see, we have a small board right here, and it works perfectly. So that's pretty much what we are going to do in this video. We're also going to organize a little bit our code and yep, let's start coding. Okay, I wanna start by declaring a constant called square size. And this is going to be equal to either the width or the height of our screen. I'm gonna go with width, double division, cause we want an integer and either the board rows or the board calls. I'm going to go with board calls. And yeah, this is going to be the constant that represents the size of a board square. So if you do the maths, this is going to be equal to 200. So let's go ahead and replace all 200s that we find with our new constant square size. So I'm going to give you a shortcut. You can actually select a number or a, or a, or a word and, and press Command D actually select the other ones. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for all of these 200s. I'm going to write square size here. In these 400s, we want to have a two times square size. So two times square size. In these 600s, we want to have our, in these two, we want to have our width. And in these two, we want to have our height. So the draw lines method should be something like this. And right here, we want to go ahead and replace this 100 with square size, sorry, with a square size divided by two. And we want to do that for pretty much every 200 that we find. So let's go ahead and do it for this one too, square size. And for this 100, we can go ahead and type square size divided by two. Uh, what else? These 200s. So go ahead and type square size. So our code now is a little bit more flexible for any dimensions we, we put. So let's go ahead and test it. I'm gonna go ahead and type 800 for both. I'm gonna save and run. Yeah, so as you can see, lines are now perfectly displayed throughout the board. And our figures, we, we need to increase the circles radius, but the crosses are pretty good, right? So let me, let me go ahead and change this to 400 to see if it works with any dimensions. So as you can see, the lines are perfectly displayed. 
and yeah we need to do some things for that so let's go ahead and fix it okay so let's go ahead and change some things of our figures constants in order to display them properly on our screen no matter what dimensions we are using so the first constant we want to change is the circle radius and I want you to think about the following so currently our circle radius has a value of 60 and our square size constant has a value of 200 right so we can represent this 60 as square size divided by 3 which is more or less 60 and this will let us actually draw and represent our circles in a perfect way no matter what dimensions we are using now we want to do the same with this space constant this space constant for those of you who don't remember was the one that gave us a space between each square corner and the crosses line so again 55 can be represented as square size divided by 4 more or less this will give us 50 so it doesn't matter and we can actually now test our figures so I'm gonna change our dimensions to 400 or even 300 and I'm gonna save and I'm gonna run the file so we have our board and as you can see our circle is perfectly displayed and our X2 so we did it we managed to do this correctly guys okay guys so our code now works with any dimensions and before we end the video I want to quickly show you something so we want to go here to our main loop and we want to go to this if statement so if you look closer we are actually repeating code this block of code is actually the same as this one we are just changing the player and we actually can do this in one single block of code so let me not gonna erase it for you to see what we are doing so we don't want to check what player is marking the square because we know that we have a variable that knows which player is marking the square so we want to just put a mark square in our click row in our click call and with player here then we want to check a win with that player so if check win player then we want to put game over equals true so game over equals true and we then want to change the player so to change the player we need to do the following we want to actually set player to be player mod 2 class 1 so I'm gonna I'm gonna explain you this so this mod operator will give us the remainder of these two numbers of the division of these two numbers so let me give you a, give you an example so let's say player is equal to 1 so now player is going to be equal to 1 mod 2 and the remainder between 1 divided by 2 is going to be equal to 1, right? Then we add 1, now player is going to be equal to 2. Perfect. Now let's say player is equal to 2. So we have new player, or the player is going to be equal to 2, mod 2, and the remainder between 2 divided 2 is going to be 0, plus 1 is going to be 1. So player is going to be 1. So this works perfectly, and we can actually go ahead and delete all these so look what we just refactored and we just simplify we turn two blocks of code into one and guys last last video i forgot to to actually put game over equal false right here so this was a small bug because if a player wins and we restart our game the game over Will continue being true right and we will never enter to the if, so we will never be able to mark a square and so on so on so yeah this is important not so much but yeah with this line your game is going to work perfectly however if you find a bug or an error let me know in the comments below and i'll try my best to fix it 
I'm going to put the code in my GitHub and you can find my GitHub down in the description below. And yeah, if you like this video, if you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to leave a like, make sure to subscribe and leave a comment. I'll see you in the next video.